sorrows fill your empty life with love and hear this warm wish and i'm meeting today from all the poets thank you so much thank you aditi now uh, jaydeep uh, i'm inviting you to give your welcome address jaydeep please thank you good poetic evening from kolkata good morning to our poet colleagues from america canada latin america wonderful good afternoon to our friends from africa and uk and good evening to all our indian poets and soul makers the digital age is booming that means attentions are shrinking and focus is alerting learning rules for writing and then breaking them with the poetry can give writing a alter an alternative kind of beauty speaking poetry aloud with its speech rhythm and rhyme can loosen the tongue and craft a firm foundation for verbal communication it's a wonderful opportunity that poetry is the aroma of the soul that connects beautiful minds from different countries and continents it leads us to a borderless map all our poets are soul makers globe builders we flow like one river through many hearts brasilia to london havana to mumbai alberta to siliguri trichy to alwar puri to jamshedpur and cape town to kolkata and many more we have one color h e a r t heart our heart collages showcase to collages showcase poetry from different backgrounds basudhara and socket take care of minute things those matter for poetry it's a free space for breathing a living a window we welcome the poets for this evening our hearts are raised in love and warm and gratitude with gratitude i welcome ario from um, latin america chitranjan mitra chitranjan mitra from one of the important places of india puri then from southern part of india represented by jayanti manoj from trichy kavita is a kill needs no introduction a daughter of the fountain head of indian english poetry great great nisan as a kill's daughter kavita is a kill from uh, alberta malati mathur madam from new delhi originally of course she was in alwar mona das for uh, Odisha born UK settled das for it one of the important voices no word is sufficient for richard grove tai the uh of uh, urans uh, brilliant uh, no oh, i'll say publishing house and a brilliant poet soul oh thank you for your gracious presence sunil sharma is uh, needs no introduction a uh, writer of flash fiction novel and a prolific writer poet of his own standing shutapa choudhury a noted poet academician from the city of joy kolkata jaina john of the author writer and the journal uh, you know editor uh, editor of a journal and a voice of africa and we are very proud to have collaborated with her for several platforms 
Virginia Mitra from the foothills of the Himalaya, northern part of Bengal. She is the voice of North Bengal, a poet, professor of English. We welcome you all with our heart red with poetry. Poets, let poesy meet each other. So borders are breaking and we have two coordinators, outstanding coordinators, poet and very interesting poet and of course uh, with different anthologies and different collections, very active man, Gopal Lahiri, now based in Kolkata, Professor Oditi Rudro, engaged professor of English and also who sang uh, a song of Kabi Guru Rabindranath Tagore had for the inauguration. I welcome the coordinators. I also welcome the coordinator and my co-project uh, partner, Basudhara Roy, for taking care of hard world collages for poetry. And a poetry of the world is the connective platform for all of us. Things are changing first, but poetry, with poetry, we survive. That's why Ario had to get up very early in the morning, five o'clock, 5.30 there, and of course, and Mona had to finish a lunch in the afternoon and we have our evening supper possibly we have to cook or to, to prepare now so we all meet for poetry i really cordially welcome you all all our soul makers and let's change the world with poetry for better purposes and better living with these words i again welcome you all for this poetry platform Thank you. Over to the coordinators. Thank you, Jaydeep, uh, for your uh, wonderful welcome address. And now I'm taking a cue from you, speaking poetry aloud. So we are going to our poetry session. Yes, it is a, a, it's a global poetry session. First of all, I will invite Ario E. Salazar. Before that, I will introduce him with you all. Ario E. Salazar is a Salvadorian poet, translator, and polyphacetic writer who also writes short stories, essays, cultural and literary criticism in Spanish in the US and Latin America. He lives in Washington and is the executive director of the communities in schools of what comes Kegate a non-profit organization devoted to community building. I'll invite right now Ario, he will read two poems. Today we are asking all the poets to read two poems. So Ario, over to you. Thank you. Um, first and foremost, um, my uh, deepest gratitude for being invited to this amazing forum. Um, I'll read uh, two short poems. Um, the first one is called A Brand New Year. Um, and the inspiration for this poem comes from the idea that different cultures have different calendars. And I think that at this point, it doesn't matter which calendar it is. We're all yearning for a reset button to set us off and start into a new, whole new year. So this poem uh, goes like this. It says, A Brand New Year. Against the face of horror and the fleeting blue, hope still bats its wings. We have thrown yet another digit into emptiness. In it, there is a cipher of blasphemies and gratefulness. It doesn't matter how much God dips us into its landfill. In its lilies, we fix our gaze, never on its mud. The second poem is uh, my salutation and my solidarity to the millions of workers in India who are revolting right now and who are asking for legitimate uh, vindications and revindications. Um, from time to time, India has been a very dear country to me. I have always heard news and sometimes it's very amazing news and sometimes it's very shocking news. I'll never forget, you know, I, I, I read, a, uh, I watched that documentary a long time ago about how um, 
the um, all the debris from the 9-11 attacks in the United States, for some reason, ended up in India. All of the debris from the buildings that have been destroyed by the attack ended up in India. And, and I never understood quite why. So part of that is, is embedded in this poem. And this poem, uh, the name of this poem comes from a comment that a peasant made when they were asking him what he thought about uh, the strikes and everything that's happening in India with the workers. And the name of the poem is, this is a revolution, sir. And the poem was like this. In the land of Buddha and Mahatma Gandhi, the least important things are the heaps, the piles of garbage, the landscape of dross, the treatise, and high mortality rates, the reification of women, of the treasures hidden in the warmth and the wombs of the earth. Over 250 million voices are saying, none of that matters now. This is a revolution, sir. Above the opulence of those who sell their children and the future of the children of their children, beneath the wings of fetid vultures, the resounding drums of the truly awakened ones are stitching the fault lines caused by vermin in the house of, Bar of Brahma. With unfailing solidarity and compassion, the workers of India sharpen the night sky and their furrows with the poetry of their ancestral strength. And that's what I had for you today. Thank you, Aryu, for your very powerful and incisive poems. And yes, uh, drums are resounding, and uh, we will all are listening to that. Next, from uh, USA, we are coming back to India, to Puri, Orissa. We have a wonderful poet present there, Chittaranjan Misro. Before I ask him to read the poem, let me introduce uh, Mr. Mishra to you all. Chitaranjan Mishra is a poet, critic, and translator, has authored 17 books and edited six anthologies of poem in Oriya and two in English. He has retired as associate professor and head of the Department of English from BJB Autonomous College, Bhavaneshwar, Orissa, in 2019. So now we will uh, hear from Mr. Mishra, Chitaranjan Mishra, over to you for your poems, please. Well, we cannot connect him right now. So I am uh, going forward. Mm. So we'll be... I think I'm on the Oh, sure. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Yes, please, sir. Please, please continue. Please continue. Uh, first, my deepest gratitude to the poets and uh, my um, indebtedness to Jayadeep Sarangi and uh, Basudhara ma'am. And uh, I'm feeling so happy to be with uh, the soul makers of the poets from all over the globe. My first poem is uh, entitled After Aftermath. A flower blooms on the remnant of a branch of a fallen tree amid a skin of roots half bare and half clinging to earth. You arrive to that flower, the fragrance of love pervades everywhere. Today, it was not there in my knowledge that love was treasured as long as the tree was. And the flower, fruit, and the green leaf, in the chirping of birds, and the play of squirrels, wet in the rain, stand in the sun, and flop in the spring. I didn't know how the springs of love keep flowing hidden behind the gray bar like the stream of blood in my veins, like the bits of my heart. I didn't know. 
everything comes to an end in a circle that completes itself by the time your time is out the circle completes itself before life parts all gems and glitter once lost return and spread as a seal that hardly can be seen Searching in a dry bowl, a bird sings of the nest, swept away by the storm. The song of the bird makes the scrolls change the colors of our parting, like the colors of our meeting. The morning after the storm is a mystery. The morning after the storm is a mystery that renders all that is lost as here and now. So I'm, I'm moving to uh, my second poem, a small um, a short poem, prayer. Gopal, please mute yourself. Gopal, Gopal, please mute yourself. Yeah, thank you. Yes, my second poem is a prayer. Trapped inside a dark and blue, I am seeking you, for I know you are Krishna, dark and blue. dark blue illuminating in the universe i we on earth are just light dusts sparkling to each other's eyes i know you can suck the dark transform colors to music playing your magic flute let me close my eyes while everywhere is flooded with love's melody before i open my lids you kiss the edge of the mute hollow inside the flute transform my emptied heart into a vessel filled with your breath spilling songs of love thank you thank you chitranjan mishra for your wonderful poems with spreading love and light so now we'll come to south india where jayanti manoj is there before i uh, hand over mic to her let me introduce jayanti manoj she is assistant professor of english teacher mentor life skills trainer and vice principal from holy cross college tiruchirappalli tamil nadu india she has been widely published as a poet and conducts workshop in creative writing so may i request jayanti manoj to read her poems so warm greetings from uh, south india and uh, i'm so delighted to warm around such beautiful poetic voices a special note of thanks to jaydeep ji celebrating you and poetry today is a pleasure and also to professor basundra roy for organizing it and a special note of thanks to the coordinators gopa lahari and aditi uh, today i'm going to read two poems one is titled calix and the other one is titled one tepakulam afternoon so the first poem calix is a poem of hope and healing and uh, it refers to the that part of the flower which holds on the petals to bloom and uh, jaydeep ji we have a lot of friends from holy cross college who have joined us today and uh, many friends from tamil nadu also are attending online so there's so much of love from all of them to all of us here we welcome Calix. all all listeners Would it... we are welcome them all yeah calyx within the winged receptacle the warped petals are twinned in pain slowly in sisterly love they unfold the crushed petals of healed love the calyx of conviction holds in waiting in quietude although uncertain of the season tenderly yet firmly holds on with hope till the flower in its time is due quietly await in affirming faith for wounds to heal 
wounds like buds take time to heal and bloom flowers bloom in silence so do the resilient ones my next poem is one tepakulam afternoon and uh, tepakulam is a landmark uh, roughly translating it it's a temple tank uh, in trichy the place where i live and it's one of the most buzzing places of our town the poem is one tepakulam afternoon right in from the rockford temple towards the main guard gate once a citadel of the war sagacious nayaks and other troops is now the forte of the city's bazaars and hagglers elbowing the crowd one walks past the wispy whiff of chandan gathered in small plates for sacred rituals to reach a top fragrance of threaded jasmines wet with freshness wisp past nostrils catawalling children dragged along with market bags of heavy purchases from ardi sale from kaveri long clothing stores while the river bed awaits for dams to open streaks of water to quench the arid lands horns vying for spaces screech incessantly drown the belches of roadside eateries and hakim's biryani simple girls mimic fashion stars with their latest street what walk bys some dab a little more of powder which sweats like a pancake a few extra coat their lips with aloe vera balms and eyes with kajal college boys and girls unmindful of the raucous crowd saunter coolly with buoyant looks and laughter a few triumphantly giggle over their bunked glasses a ham handful slip into higgin bottoms for a quiet rummage of books and letters the thirsty eyes wait in crowded files watching the glass tumblers half filled with crushed eyes quickly dripping with honey colored nanari sarbat punched with a squeezed lemon in a jiffy glasses stirred and gulped down endless like the another hard await to grab cups of sugarcane juice with a dash of ginger to quench the sweltering sun come breathe in the city's scents sir john and feel the pulsating tempo of the town amidst clamoring crowd and tessellated bazaars and drink its flavors and goodness just once in one's time thank you jayanti manoj thank you very much for your beautiful poems thank hope you. and healing these are the two words we want to listen right now because we are in a time of pandemic and we want to need to be healed and there should be some hope of life and then your next poem you have beautiful vivid portrayal of life so we move on from ajayanti manoj to kavita ezekiel mendonza will be going back to Alberta, Canada, where she is residing now. Before I asking him to read her poems, I will introduce her with you all. Kavita Ezekiel Mendoza was born and raised in Beni Israel Jewish family in Bombay, now Mumbai. She is a published poet and short fiction writer, and the daughter of the late. Indian poet Nisim Ezekiel. Over to Kavita, ma'am. Good morning, everybody, and Feliz Cumpleaños to Jaydeepda, and thank you, Bashudara, for waking me up so early. It's still nice and dark outside, but there's a lot of light in our hearts and in my home. So I'm going to read two poems on the theme of light. 
Um, I know that Jaideep Das said, I have to read one poem by my father. And that one is also about light a little bit. And I know that Basudara likes this particular poem. So these poems are dedicated to Basudara and to Jaideep Das. The first one is called How to Light Up a Poem. And it starts with a quotation. Poets are troubled minds wandering in search of lighted paths. And that's my own quotation. Gently petition the moon for some moonbeams, scatter them softly on the path. Implore the sun for a ray or two, cast with care along the way. Ask the trees for shadows and silhouettes, brush the paths with shades of these. Strike up, strike up a conversation with the trees. Soon there'll be a dialogue. If there's a stream, a brook or a lake nearby, splash some water to purify the air around. Surely there are squirrels to add their chatter and birds to drop their feathers in images of noise and silence. Cherries and apples will add their distinctive flavor. You do not have to ask permission. The apples will fall when they're ready, like the leaves in autumn. Flutter and lightly press the wings of the butterflies and the buzz of the bees into the page. Catch and hold the colorful darting dragonflies and blooming flowers close to the heart. A weed or two is necessary to bring reality to the poem and some darkness for our sorrow. Search with flashlights into the deepest depths of your soul. Bring in your own inner light. Don't hide it under the bushel or it will fade like the stars in the early morn. The solar lights will light the night, sometimes on gray days too. And forget not the wind, that which fills the sails to steer the ship to shore. If after doing these things, you do not manage to light up the poem, don't worry. When the light wants to come in, it will knock. Vasudhara. <laughs> and the second poem I'm going to read is uh, from <laughs> my um, And that's from my father, Nisim Ezekiel. And it's called Poet, Lover, Bird Watcher. And it's my absolute favorite poem. Poet, Lover, Bird Watcher by Nisim Ezekiel. To force the pace and never to be still is not the way of those who study birds or women. The best poets wait for words. The hunt is not an exercise of will, but patient love relaxing on a hill to note the movement of a timid wing. Until the one who knows that she is loved no longer waits, but risks surrendering. In this, the poet finds his moral proved, who never spoke before his spirit moved. The slower movement seems somehow to say much more. To watch the rarer birds, you have to go along deserted lanes and where the rivers flow, in silence near the source or by a shore, remote and thorny like the dark heart's floor. And there the women slowly turn around, not only flesh and bone, but myths of light with darkness at the core, and sense is found by poets lost in crooked, restless flight. The deaf can hear, the blind recover sight. Thank you. Wonderful, Kavita ji. Uh, I was reminded of Goethe's famous line, like, more like. So we need light at the present moment. And this is the now, season of yeah. um, Hanukkah. Today is the second day of Hanukkah. Yeah, yeah, it's Hanukkah. And yeah. Uh, Hanukkah is the festival of lights. And uh, all of yeah. you know that I was born and raised in a Jewish family. So we are lighting the menorah. But my cats are giving a lot of trouble because they're very curious about the flame. So we have to keep watching the flame. And in Hanukkah, we're not allowed to snuff out the flame. We have to let the candles burn. But, you know, with the two cats around, it's, it's a challenge. So thank you so much. 
Thank you. And that's really Diwali is there in your place. So that's now right. we'll be moving on uh, to uh, again coming back to, to have a alwar and then now residing in Delhi, Maluti Mathur. Before I request her to read her poems, I will uh, introduce you with you all. Maluti Mathur is with the Faculty of English and Director, School of Humanities at IGNO, New Delhi. Creative writer, translator, and poet, her poems are featured in various media and been translated into Hindi and Tamil. She recently read from her poetry at the JLS Colorado edition. So over to Maluti Mathur. Thank you, Gopal. And uh, thank you, Joydeep and uh, Basudra for uh, inviting me here. I'm delighted to be here with such amazing poets and wonderful words. So uh, I have two short poems today. The first one is uh, titled Broken Wings. The bird with a broken wing, just an indeterminate smudge on the windowsill that flopped into my consciousness one sudden morning, sharp with parrot chirp, its dire unabashed need so palpable I could not but respond with a rush of tenderness. Did it hold in its core, perhaps, my own need to be needed? Whatever the secret of the labyrinthine generosity that takes as much as it gives, I poured out my compassion. As the icicles around the fringes of my existence thawed, melted, and finally flowed into a stream of joyous caring. When did I, unawares, become dependent on this shamelessly demanding being, which took as though it were its due, the very essence of my soul? Then, on a day very like the one on which it nestled its way into my horizon, it simply flew away, whole and unmindful of the covenant forged in the fire of our mutual dependence. It swooped back a few forays, scattered some notes of broken song like careless thanks, and then soared so far away, I became just an indeterminate smudge at the windowsill. The second one is titled, What You Are. I have paid the price for being what I am. I proclaim with pride. I have withstood icy glances, burning words, entombing silences, merciless shutting of emotional doors, smoldering resentment that flashed cruelly like bloodstained swords in battle, the sharp knives of induced guilt, the tear bursts of hope denied, the burden of sorrowful resignation. But the path of my convictions beckoned. I set out on the stony road to fulfill, perhaps in part, the grasping tenacity of my will. What delusions did I foster in my blind heart? When did I become oblivious to the call of need in loving eyes? I now look around me and see all those who have paid the price too, not for being what they are, but for my being what I am. Thank you. Wonderful, ma'am. Wonderful. Excellent. Thank so you. good. Really, it's heart touching. And Thank you, Maluti and Mathur, <laughs> for your fabulous poems. And I am reminded that poetry is actually the blend of ideas and imagination. And what are those images? Really, really fantastic. 
Now we'll move on uh, to Mona Dash yes. and also to UK where she is residing right now. Before I request her to read her poems, I will introduce Mona Dash to you all. Mona Dash is poet and fiction writer. She lives in London and is the author of A Roll of the Dice, a story of loss, love and genetics, A Certain Way, Untamed Heart and Dawn Drops. So all those beautiful books she has already written. Over to Mona Dash. Thank you. And um, once again, thanks a lot for uh, inviting me um, to Jaydeep and Basudara for this wonderful Friday afternoon. It's really been great uh, listening to everybody else now. Um, um, so yeah, and um, also it's a special day because it's Jaydeep's birthday. So I can think of no better way to spend a Friday afternoon. So my first poem, it's, um, it's actually one of my newer poems and uh, it's not been published. It's kind of reflective of um, the times we are in now. And it's called, um, There Are Things Rotting in the Fridge. There are things rotting in the fridge. The yogurt we bought some days ago. Our footsteps loud in the quiet superstore. Angry our eyes, enraged our voices as we raged about the news in the papers. The kisses not shared for years, coiling in that anger. You agreed with some, I disagreed with some, never the same things. And our footsteps grew angrier as we argued louder, louder. And the echoes lodged in the yogurt, now watery, large flecks of green mold decorating its whiteness. It has gone off, as has this packet of bean sprouts. Healthy food bought the day the fires raged. Humans howled and animals cried human tears. There's ash, broken bits of bones in the sprouts. And this meat, delicate pink, we had bought the morning they broke God's own house and danced on its ruins, as they have been doing for centuries. The meat, now mold green, bright saffron. The smell drowns the citrus deodorant in our fridge. And this Philadelphia bought yesterday at noontime, at news time, as leaders spoke, has sprouted large spores on its soft cream cheese body. The leaders from countries where we live, where we love, where we were born, where we holiday, they talk louder, the acquist gather, the applause gets stronger, the narrative the same, the hate the same, and the voices all together rise so high, so fast, and escape out of the windows over the houses and sweep, sweep across those crimson skies, those drying rivers, those sinking mountains, and here in the fridge, more and more things rot. So um, the second poem, it's kind of a more, uh, I would say, idealistic poem. And it's um, basically, there's always hope. And we always have to be living with hope. So this poem is um, kind of more cheerful than the other one. It's called A World Like This. Is there such a world where there's never been a drought? Is there such a sky where the rains have never stopped? Is there such an earth where the consciousness is one? Is there such a world, word when spoken heals every wound? Is there such a touch so deep, forever felt, never forgot? More fool I, you may say, to ask a question. When the answer is the same, whatever the language, wherever in the world. More fool I, you may say. But what if, what if such a moment does dawn? Would it be my dream, purple hallucination? What if somewhere the skies and seas have met? Would it be just the irrelevant rambling of a failed poet? Thank you. 
really well. Thank you, Mona Das, for your yeah. beautiful, engaging, yeah. and again with beautiful <laughs> images. So now yeah. I request Aditi to continue Thank with your beautiful you. voice. Yes, yes. Uh, I really don't know what the, we are feeling. So happy. So it's so heart touching. Okay, I won't be wasting much time. I'll be introducing Richard M. Grove, or better known to his friends as Ty. He's a poet, writer, editor, publisher, photographer, and president of Canada Cuba Literary Alliance. He's the poet laureate of Brighton, Ontario and has 20 titles of poetry, fiction, and memoir to his credit. He is literary consultant of ACC Shanghai U Literature and the editor-in-chief of Diva Art and Literary Canada. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. Let me start by saying um, greetings from Canada. Not only did I get up early, but it's cold here and it was snowing. Before I read my poems, I would like to say um, th very uh, much a thank you to Dr. Saranji. I, I hope that that's the proper pronunciation for your name, or at least close enough. And to also to Dr. Roy for inviting me to this international online reading. It's wonderful to meet so many people. They have both become colleagues and now in such a short amount of time they are designated as friends. My first poem is about the light of divine love. It comes in the form of a letter poem. I have started writing letter poems uh, many, many years ago. Um, and this one is to a dear friend in Cuba, and it's very short, but it, it uh, fits with the um, ideas of um, that we've been sharing today about uh, light. The title is Sometimes a Tomato, December 3rd, 2000, or 2020. Dear Addis, God loves you. All of your human needs are met by divine love, sometimes in the form of money, sometimes in the form of a laptop, sometimes simply in the form of a tomato. For me, it is always in the form of a smile and my love. Hugs to you and your dear family. The next poem is about my mother. Thank you. About my mother. Um, she's 92 now and she's in a retirement home. And unfortunately, because of the COVID, I'm not able to visit her, but I send her cards all the time. This, um, this poem is about um, her, her memories. The title is Fragments of Memories. Mother is living with what is left of memories, fragments of time, surfing on a milky pool of reality. It was cold when skating with her father 80 years ago, her at age 12 so very cold walking into the wind when when no one else dared join them at the skating rink scattered glimpses of scarfed faces blurred trying to come into focus boots almost too cold to put on running home hand in hand with her father hot chocolate waiting. Now, all of these years later, knuckles white gripping wheelchair, running into running to get warm. 
now with soft silver satin hair, shadows, the recollections of tobogganing. Was it with her brother or with her children 50 or 60 years ago? Fragments of memories slip between pillow and breakfast, pillow and lunch, while gazing at ghosts, undulating shadows on the wall. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Really heart touching. Really heart touching. It's a, a, a graphic picture about your mother, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, Thank now you. coming from Canada, we are again coming to Mumbai. So let me introduce uh, uh, Sunil Sharma. He doesn't need any introduction, I'm sure. Uh, let me say just a line about him. Sunil Sharma is academic, poet, and principal anchored in Mumbai. He loves dabbling in words, lyrical and prosaic, and has 22 books under his belt. He edits the prestigious Setu online journal of arts from Pittsburgh. And I won't be losing much time, but want to hear from him. Yes, Sunil, sir. Thank you very much, Aditi, for such a wonderful introduction, full of warmth, love, a pleasure to be here. When the earth called, all the poets responded. And it's a great feeling to be there. Thanks once again to uh, close friends Jadeep and Basudhara. And a very lovely feeling here listening to such gifted poets better than me. Uh, first poem is Roaming the muttering streets with Mr. Eliot. Let us go then, you and I. <coughs> Sorry for the throat. Let us go then, you and I, when the evening is spread out against the sky, like a patient etherized on a table, quoting from T.S. Eliot, of course. And there you, Mr. Eliot, my companion, on these gray, half-deserted Indian streets, searching for that overwhelming question, should I ask now? Well, the streets go on unending. Arguments in closed bedrooms that go on and on, never resolving in the humidity and heat of coastal Mumbai. I find that we still follow you, still talk of you in elite drawing rooms and stuffy academy. Mr. Eliot, the prim and proper gentleman and a classicist surveying inner, outer wastelands. Despite a post-colonial experience of more than seven decades here in India, is it not very strange? Redefining current selves, ourselves, through your blue lens. Thank you. That is the end of the first poem, a post-colonial response to the British influence on the Indian academy. The second uh, short, poems, short poem is taken from the anthology edited jointly by Jaydi with uh, Australian poet Rob Harley. A short one. The title of this anthology is Dancing the Light. And the poem is titled Light. Here it goes. 
The light slays the dark clouds of a September sky and illuminates the grey mass of concrete Mumbai. A man offers ablutions to the sun from his balcony full of potted plants, eyes closed, lips muttering hymns composed thousands of years before and still sung with gusto in the middle class homes, believing in old gods in a commercial city. Early morning, commuters, walkers, school children in a hurry. For them, it's just another day, Sisyphean. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, sir. Thank you, really. Such depth. Very nice, sir. Thank you. And again, coming from Mumbai, let us come back to Kolkata. So, Sutapa Chaudhary is a poet, translator, academic, and teaches English at a college under Calcutta University. Her poetry, essays, reviews, and translations have been published widely in India and abroad. So, over to you, Sutapa, ma'am. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, okay. you are. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you very much, Joydeep for inviting me here in such, I'm really, really honored to be in such August, uh, uh, among all August company. And today is Joydeep's birthday. So the heart is really raining light today. So um, my poem uh, would talk about the distance and isolation that our time has made us experience. So my first poem is, how do you speak out? How do you speak out when no love is left in your mouth? When your tongue, thick with lonely desire, searches to the empty cavity, the hard roof impervious, the soft uvula, a dull blue, frozen solid with the chill of a loveless existence. Down the empty tunnels, the voice box echoes a terrifying nothingness, and the vocal cords ring, speechless and white, in a tiresome, static resonance. Short of oxygen, the lungs choke, the throat gulp in air, desperate to speak out once, breathless, the pharynx tries in a last futile bid to save itself from extinction. Yet, how do you speak out when made-up lips sport a ready lipstick love, happiness on show? The next poem would be, thank you, would be talking about the end of this loveless existence. It is titled, I am learning peacefulness. I have grown tired running after rushing rivers, lying supine on the riverbed, the sand ribs raised and bare like bony skeletons. The shadows of swarming fish clouding my open eyes, their quicksilver life reflected in my dark irises. I'm learning to live. Nonchalant, the gray-green water flows above me, the pebbles cold and smooth under my bare back, my face composed and at peace. My nostrils flared, the exhaled breath arrested, floating, like a bubble frozen on the calm surface of the lake. My limbs ashen and flaccid, lying limp by my side, 
away from the turmoil of life, my body submerged and underwater. I am learning peacefulness. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Really, thank you for this central and it's really for the soul. Thank you, ma'am. And again, thank from you. Kolkata, we are moving to a very famous poetess. No need to be introduced, Zena John. She debuted her post colonial Indian diasporic poetry. She is a ZAP researcher, a spiritual healer and an international event consultant. So without wasting time, let's welcome her. Yes, over to Zena, ma'am. Thank you so much for that incredible introduction. I don't think that is me. <laughs> but anyway, um, as, as mentioned, I'm part of the Indian diaspora, probably third generation in South Africa, courtesy of indentured laborers. Happy birthday to Jadeep and thank you to Jadeep and Basudhara for affording us this amazing opportunity. All of you have been so soulful already, so I'm going to try and, and match up to that. Um, before I start, I just want to say that I believe that I'm a conduit for these poems, so I can't quite claim that they are mine, but they come through me. The first is called I Am, and it is part of um, the book, Beyond Spice, that was published in 2016. I am. I am the free flow. I am the energy. I am you and I am me. I am is the most powerful echo in the universe. I bring to life that which has lain dormant for centuries. I sizzle through water drops. I dance on rainbows. I am the smile on your child's face. I am the wrinkle on your oldster's skin. I am life bursting forth from the green shoots. I am the wail of a newborn. I am the last sigh of the soul that travels beyond. I am infinity in a star. I am a wisp of thought, gone in a second, neither here nor there but everywhere and nowhere. And the second poem called Life is a Dance. It was from a channeling session I had. Life is a dance. The universe dances through each of us, through ourselves and the spaces in between. In the altered state, the dance moves stronger and sways one hypnotically. The body becomes more ethereal, Love resounds through it all. The truth is built into every fiber of every being, waiting for realization to release it. A kernel of truth contains the mysteries of the universe. When the key is unlocked for one instant and everything becomes known, the soul rises to meet the Paramatma, the super soul and they transcend into one pond of reverberating love. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful, ma'am. Thank you for uh, giving a vibrant <laughs> note today. Wonderful. It really touched us. Yes, thank you so much. And let's move again to North Bengal. So let us welcome Zenia Mitra, who teaches English at the University of North Bengal, and is the director of Center for Women's Studies, University of North Bengal. Her travelogues, articles, and poems have been widely published. She is on the editorial board of Tista Review, International Journal of Poetry. Yes, let's welcome Zenia Mitra. Thank you for this generous introduction, poet Aditi Rudra. Thank you, Jadeep and Basudhara, for organizing this poetry evening. Many, many happy returns of the day, Jadeep. That was a sweet surprise. I heard so many fabulous poems connected with so many poets. Uh, with the mercury steadily dipping here, <clears throat> every time <clears throat> I received a message from Hearth calling, it warmed me up. Thank you for your invitation. Jaydeep and Basudhara again to this August company in December. 
I will read two poems and try to keep within time. First, my first poem, Trees Are Buddhas. The trees are Buddhas. They stand wrapped in intense meditations together and make forests. When the melancholic winds break against their feet, they preach peace. They shed their memories like autumnal leaves. Born on the moist earth, the trees bloom fragrant flowers like love. Greener leaves sprout like sutras in the spring to whisper truths. The seasons dance their melodies on the boughs, adorn them with new leaves, new fruits, then strip them away. <clears throat> the trees then lift the furrowed barks and yellowed leaves. Ripe seedy fruits fall on the earth. Each seed is wood to grow a tree. Spring arrives to fulfill them. The trees grow old secretly after every spring. They draw coded rings deep inside their trunks, then wither away. Preachers of deep silence, they live the rhythm of the cosmos. We die many times in a lifetime like the trees, are renewed with every spring that comes our way, and after a season of fruits and flowers burden, carrying our floral memories, we die. The gust rolls the fallen leaves across forest floors. Bamboo flutes make somber music. The tall green trees silently embrace the seasons. We all are undeciphered rings in the end. Thank you. My second poem, Lag. Lag is a failure to keep up with others. In a movement, or a development, a period of time between one event and another, a retardation in an electric current flow, also another term for string, North American billiards. Strings tie up our bits and pieces when we lag behind. It is a harrowing feeling of exclusion, like a torn, scrunched page that lands outside the bin, or like the silence of hours when a companion has hired a sturdy boat and left the curved shoes of life. And we grow conscious of the dead, wet sand under our feet and question the meaninglessness of the oblong bubbles of water that pop up. Sometimes it is pleasant to lag behind when all the others with their backpacks have hurried away to look at the crumpled bed sheets used towels and lipstick-stained coffee cups to imagine their very, very busy sunlit days. Sometimes it is wonderful to lag behind in a relationship when the others have moved away. Listen to old songs, feel the dog-eared books, smile at photographs, and imagine the fresh tapering fingers of friendship holding his hands. Sometimes I lag behind to savor these moments, to know that I exist always alone. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for creating such an aesthetic ambience. It was really wonderful, really wonderful. And Thank coming you. back more to home, I hand over to Gopal Lahiri, sir. Yes, sir. Let us continue with it. Uh... I welcome Gopalda as the coordinator to read a couple of poems. And uh, Gopal Lahiri is a noted uh, poet published in different magazines and journals in India and abroad, an editor. Okay, over to Gopalda, please. Please unmute. Please unmute. Huh? Unmute. Yeah, thank you, Jayadeep. Uh, I'll be reading two small poems, uh, two city poems. First poem, the title is Cityscape. Out there in the whirring street, the pigeons huddle on the broken pavement. Dark slum boys resign to their pale and silent utterance and stay starved. The evening line trembles, spilling 
beyond the brown pillar's edge come closer to the normal the entry path wants footsteps searching the inheritances of sounds of laughter of high octave notes the marble door has the feel of a gothic afterward the cadence resolves into perfect peace the buzz and motor horns go mute night birds loop their voices in layers of soft radiant textures hints of shadow keep pulses a vocal fire out like blitz into an empty space the mansion light backs and wanes in silence a fast trill of notes and the whispery laugh talks die slowly with the blustery wind the murmurs that ease with the dark shadow now stand on the wind shield each chapati borrows its fire from the clay oven ash and cinder much needed warmth for the homeless in the winter night and my second poem is there are no stories the woman's bleeding lips open blood's draining her face she talks to the parts of her drawn to chorus of voices stitching the future with empty spaces faith is a hated word now living inside questions without answers tortured and tormented violence in continuum unresolved uncorrected no footstep of children running after the school bus no tiny bird twits the summer glow missing geo tags long standing mysteries and the inexplicable gaps in memory nails on an empty sidewalk pulls up blood all around she cries in silence tears feed the unknown weeds never wanted to be understood the world can offer only a deep indifference she bends to pick up a coin someone throws at her and smiles weaving words after words and her dream goes up into flames rises above and envelops the sky ashes to ashes dust to dust reaching out to a new resistance a new belief the story stops here there are no stories thank you and now i will request jaydeep to uh, start uh, to read some poem before that i'll just uh, tell you about introduce about jaydeep it's very difficult to introduce him with two three lines Jaydeep Sarangi is a bilingual poet, translator, and critic of several works and publications on Australian literature, Indian writing in English, post-colonial studies, and the Dalit literary movement in India. Widely anthologized as a poet and critic, Sarangi backs seven collection of poems. He is currently the principal of New Alipur College, Kolkata. So over to Jaydeep. Thank you, Gopalda. My first poem that I am going to read today, uh, title as "Lost Home." On the days of the falling dead leaves, I see your face in watery memories. My thoughts hang in the air to see you again and again, home or no home. You draft my version. You craft my boat to sail in the dark passage of the map to a lighted discourse somewhere unattained. On the pages I write, I cry my dreams in leafy silence. My second poem. home sweet home possibly we are all searching for a home not a house i try to think of a home where my feet are door after door 
with a key that is not. I travel between joy and more joy, not understanding what to grow into myself. Trains, jungles and deep water, what white mountains and smart springs, my legs know them all. My daughter has a question. Where is the window, father? I see one there, aging one in the distance. Where the forest queen sits, my daughter takes me for a ride every month beyond my failures and success. Thank you so much. Wonderful, wonderful, so excellent. Thank really. you, Jayadi, for your wonderful poems and really home, sweet home. Excellent. We are here, it's almost like a home here with so many beautiful poets reading their poems. Now, we are at the end of the program, so I'll invite our heart of the heart, Basudhara Roy. She writes, she teaches, she reviews, she's from Jamshedpur, Jharkhand, India. Over to Basudhara. Good evening, everybody, and it is such a joy seeing you all here today. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation to be here. And I, I would like to read two short poems. The first one is titled Deja Vu. In knowing your light, I thought I swallowed the sun. Limbs, foot, thoughts, veins, raining resplendence as light danced in my caverns and every fortress broke into an open field. The heart, a burnished mirror reflecting your endless sky. I shut my eyes to witness within me imperial birth. Crimson, amber, tangerine, Tuscany, ochre. And this death by ecstasy of liberation, of the scattering effortlessly like color and rising into indeterminate unbeing, like fire into smoke. Opening my eyes, however, I realize that one exile has only led to another. Neither new nor brave. This land promises only stranger colors, stormy languages, unusual habits, different laws. I'm a lot of new prayer, a new God, another mirror, Tenanted already by face. Thank you. My second poem is entitled In Love. In love, I ask you to become the sky so I may enter as I am without needing to forego parts of myself so that each time I gaze upward, you I find blue, endless, unprejudiced. Your depths unfathomable, unfilled. So that no matter what worlds I'm denied, I know your arms away, tireless, patient, benign. I promise in return to be the earth, so you know your altitude has a base, to grow unceasingly from green to red to mellow in waiting, so you may be stirred to unblow awakening of time's song, to keep beckoning through mountain silence, river laughter, trees limbs, so your solitude remains a season, not year long. It's true, we may never meet, but there will be too much between us to leave. Our horizon of promise, though illusory, as undeniable as light gradually dissolving into the arms of day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mushidara, uh, yeah. for your riveting poems. So now I will request you uh, to give the vote of thanks for this evening. So with my own poems, we come to the conclusion of this very beautiful evening and a great Yes, sir. Uh, vote of thanks to you. Hello. Yeah. Uh, on behalf of Hearth family, 
Hey, God, really Hello, yes, Jadeep, so something to be said? Yeah, yeah, and uh, I uh, really thank, we thank you all who um, actually who have joined from different time zones at uh, different times of the odd hours of the morning to the afternoon and some left the lunch. I think Mona had to rush or Jaina had to rush <laughs> and um, a very a very bright morning i think in canada alberta or in uh, of course in uh, thai's place or ario it's wonderful and we are all have one we have one river that is running in all of us one heart that is connecting poetry a lighted discourse thank you for pouring water from puri to trichy to kalan to uh, from delhi and kolkata of course, from Shiliguri and Jamshedpur. So all cities have one name, Red Heart, that writes poetry. We all write. We write for a cause, for a better tomorrow. Thank you, everybody, for your valuable time. Wonderful reading. And we enjoyed each other's reading so much. We were engrossed in imagery of different backgrounds, of different cadence. It's so unique. You contributed a lot to this evening, and it was pure, pure learning from you all. So thank you all. We will connect again, again and again for the cause of poetry. And we collaborate each other. We talk to each other over email, WhatsApp, and we meet each other. And of course, poetry is something that is our, not a whole house, but it's our home, a heart. Thank you all. Any observations from all of you? Yeah, Mona. Yes. No, no, I'm saying thank you. And uh, I did not have to rush for my lunch. It's perfect timing for me. <laughs> okay. <not to problem. laughs> okay, thank you so much. Uh, so it was one finish lunch. It was wonderful thank journey you. together. Thank you so much. And thank we look you. to thank meet you. you again. It was a wonderful evening. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, so much. Thank thank you, you so much. Thank you, Jaina. Thank you, Thai. Thank, thank you, thank everybody. You. Everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Jaydeep Ji. And uh, all, you, the, coordinators. all the participants who listened to it. Of course, we uh, it was 55, so we are 15. 